It depends on what part of the body you're x-raying. If it's a really thick part like the chest, you're going to use higher MA. You're going to produce more radiation. So you're going to use maybe 200 okay, or higher. If it's a thinner body part like a wrist or an elbow or finger, then you're going to use a lower MA. Okay, so the higher the MA, the more radiation. Remember those electrons that come off? Just think of more electrons or more radiation with more milliamps. The KVP, that's called the quality or the penetrating power. The, the more KVP that you use, it's called kilovoltage peak, the more power the radiation has to push through your body. So you'll have settings uh, somewhere in between like 40 to 80, maybe 48, maybe 50, 52. All right, so for a thicker body part, you're gonna need a higher KVP. Okay, the third number that you put in is your time. For each x-ray, uh, you have to set the time. Usually the time is a very short amount of time. For example, it'll be in a fraction like one tenth of a second. You'll even see something like two twentieths. Okay. Basically what that tells you, it's just like taking a picture. When you hit that button and you see that flash, once that flash stops, the camera has stopped taking a picture. So the same thing with the x-ray machine. If you set the time to one-tenth of a second and then you hit the button to take the x-ray, in one-tenth of a second the x-ray beam has come out and then it stops. Okay, So these are called the exposure factors. Your MA, KVP, and time. The key to remember is MA represents the quantity, which is the amount of radiation, and KVP is the quality. All right, so for anyone watching the video, right now your, your instructor can give you uh, practice problems to work on. Also, you should be able to answer the questions in the book from page 9 to 11 uh, based on what we've gone over. All right, so now we're going to go over um, on the bottom of page 6. Um, this, or actually, the bottom of page 5 is where it starts. The sensitivity of, of uh, body cells to radiation. All right, different parts of your body can take more radiation than others. It depends on uh, how much you get exposed to and what parts of the body. So what would you think would be some parts of the body that are more sensitive to radiation? Yes. The ovaries. All right. The ovaries. Um, up here, you have a list of um, the parts of the body that are more sensitive. The reproductive cells are kind of in the middle, but that's going to be your ovaries and testicles, okay? Um, because the sperm cells and egg cells have the DNA. That's right. Remember, the DNA is in there. So if they get damaged, that's uh, damage that could show up in your children. So they're kind of in the middle. They're, they're sensitive, but not as sensitive as some other cells. The most sensitive are going to be immature cells. Immature cells means the cells are going through mitosis. Mitosis is when the cell divides and makes copies of itself. So different cells in your body are going to do that for a certain amount of time. And, and when it's going through that stage, that's when it's very sensitive to radiation. Okay. Also blood cells. Your blood cells can be very sensitive Especially in the notes, it tells you the lymphocytes. Lymphocytes are one of your white blood cells, and they help to fight off viruses and certain types of cancer. Okay, they're very sensitive to radiation. The muscles actually can take a lot more radiation than other parts of the body. So it's not as dangerous to do an x-ray of your knee or your, your lower leg than it would be to do an x-ray of your pelvis, because in your pelvis, especially for females, that's where the uterus is and the ovaries. Okay. Now, something else you want to know about is the nerves, actually in an adult, the nerves can pretty much withstand radiation up to a certain point. But if you're less than two years old, the nervous system is still very sensitive to radiation. So in young children, the brain and spinal cord is still developing. It's going to be more sensitive to radiation. If you go to the top of page six, it talks about some of the effects that radiation has on the body. All right, 
And there's three main levels of uh, exposure that you can get that can cause damage to your body. The first one is the molecular effect. Okay, this molecular effect has to do with your exposure to uh, the exposure of your body to radiation, especially your DNA. Okay, there's a couple of ways that that can happen. All right, so with molecular damage, there's two ways it can happen. It's called either direct hit or indirect. All right, remember in the middle of your cell, you have the nucleus, and that's where your DNA is. All right, so the radiation can affect your DNA, but it has to get uh, through the cell into the nucleus to do that. And one way that it can happen is the direct hit. So here's the radiation. It comes into the cell and goes straight to the nucleus in the DNA. So it goes right directly to where it's trying to go. All right, indirect is a little bit slower. The radiation comes in and it starts messing up the inside of the cell before it gets to the nucleus. And then eventually it'll work its way into the nucleus. So that's a little bit slower is all that, that really is about. So indirect is just telling you that it takes a little bit longer to get there. Okay, that's the, the lowest level. Then you move up to the cellular level of damage. Okay, in other words, instead of just your DNA getting damaged, your whole cell will get damaged. The biggest level is the organic effect. This is talking about different organs of the body. Okay? Some of your organs are going to be more sensitive to others. Your eyes, for example, and your thyroid, they're very sensitive to radiation. All right, the heart, the lungs are going to be sensitive, the ovaries, okay? A lot more than muscles, bones, things like that. Okay, so that's the organic effect. All right, at the bottom of page six, it talks about the two types of organic effects of radiation. You have genetic and somatic. All right, remember genetic is not something that you're going to feel. If your DNA over here gets exposed to radiation, you're not going to feel it. Who's going to feel that effect? Yes. Your kids. Okay, it's going to show up in kids. All right, mm -hmm. and it could be several years later that they're born and they have problems because you were exposed. The somatic effects, those are the things that you can actually feel. Okay? That's going to be cancer, tumors, melanoma, things like that. Okay? Those are the things that you can feel because you got exposed to radiation. And there's two types. There's long-term somatic effects and short-term somatic effects. All right. Long-term means that you're exposed to a small amount of radiation over a long period of time. All right, for example, people who go out and are in the sun all the time, the people that work out in the sun, or maybe they, they go to the beach all the time, and after years and years of being in the sun, what, what are some problems that you start to get? Skin cancer, like melanoma. All right. You can also develop cataracts. All right. That's considered a long-term effect. It's, you get a little bit of radiation you know, week after week, year after year, eventually it catches up with you. The short-term effect um, is usually a large amount of radiation over a real small period of time. Uh, that would be like when they dropped the atomic bo bomb in Japan during World War II. You know, people were killed instantly. It's an it's a extremely powerful amount of radiation over a short period of time. And that's called acute radiation syndrome. All right, on page seven at the top, it tells you a little bit about acute radiation syndrome. It tells you how it works, uh, the different stages that you go through. You have the initial stage, all right? This is what happens, you know, within 48 hours of getting exposed to the radiation. This is when you get really sick. It's more like flu-like symptoms, but you feel pretty bad for a couple of days. 